So in this video, I'm going to talk about the chief ray uh, and a little bit about the field stop of an optical system. Uh, but first, I want to motivate these concepts. So uh, we saw in a previous video that if we've got some optical system, and let's just draw this as a single lens here, even though in general it might be many, many lenses, uh, we said that we could draw a ray right to the edge of the lens. And let's say that we form an image over here. So this is going to be an inverted image because it's a single lens. Uh, and this ray, uh, this ray that just barely nicked uh, the edge of our limiting aperture or our aperture stop, uh, we called this the marginal ray. And this has some angle associated with it, which I've called theta max. And this ray is really important because it limits our, the light that we can collect from our system. So from a, a point source here, which is emanating spherical waves in all directions, only some of that radiation, so only the radiation within this cone is captured by our optical system. The rest is lost. And so that's really important. Um, this angle will also turn out to limit our resolution and our numerical aperture. So it's also very important for that reason. And so if we're gonna draw one ray, we definitely wanna draw the marginal ray. But what about how many rays do we need to draw for an optical system? Um, how many total rays do we need um, to fully describe an optical system? And I mean for a given object distance, so at a particular, uh, particular distance away from our first element. Um, well, the, this really is a question of how many uh, degrees of freedom does this system have? Does our input have? Because we, we can send in as many input rays as we like to the, into the system. Uh, but in general, these rays have two properties. They've got some height, which I'm going to call x in. So that's the distance that we, or that's the height above the optical axis that we launch our ray from. For example, this would be our distance that we're launching the ray at. And so that would be the completion of this ray. And for the marginal ray, this x in value is zero because we're launching it from the origin. Um, we also have the degree of freedom of our angle that we send in a ray with. And so this ray that I've sent here, uh, this has zero angle. And this ray, our marginal ray, has some angle which corresponds to the maximum angle that we can send into our system. So we really have two uh, degrees of freedom with which we, we get to choose. We get to choose the angle that we send a ray in, and we get to choose the height that we send it in. And if we make the paraxial approximation, uh, then we know we can represent optical systems using matrices. And so if we've got two input, uh, let's call them input rays, let me erase all these arrows here. Um, we've got two input rays, perhaps we have one that has all height and no angle, and the other which is all angle and no height, then from that we can form any arbitrary ray. So let's call this uh, x, well, let's call this x any, uh, so we can have any input height and any input angle just by combining our ray with some angle and our ray with no angle. So we can mathematically write this like a times uh, our marginal ray perhaps, or maybe just some arbitrary ray with some angle, uh, plus some arbitrary coefficient b times this ray that we sent in with some height uh, and no angle. So we can make up any ray out of any two rays which have some angle and some height. So we only need, the important part about this is we only need two rays to describe our optical system. And so now we just need to choose which two. Now one natural choice, which is almost always used, is the marginal ray, uh, because this ray is just so important, and it's made up of all angle. So you might say, well, how about the other ray is just all height? Uh, and that's a natural choice, because that makes our analysis fairly easy. The problem is that it doesn't give us a whole lot of information. So it tells us where we're going to focus light, or it tells us the back focal length of our lens or in general, the back focal length of our optical system. Uh, but this is not terribly interesting. So this is not generally a useful uh, thing to know for optical systems. One really important piece of information we haven't captured yet is we know we're going to have, in general, some finite size sensor uh, 
So if we've got a sensor at the image plane, for example, um, we, we know it has some finite size to it. You know, cameras have a finite number of pixels, and this corresponds to a finite size. Maybe it's like uh, 10 millimeter by 10 millimeter, for example. And this corresponds to some maximum object size. So there's some object which, if it gets any bigger than that, we're not going to, the rays that we're sending into our system are going to be falling off of the sensor. And this we're going to call the chief ray. Now the question is, how do we draw the chief ray? Um, so let's say we've got this same optical system here. We've got a lens, and I'm actually going to put the aperture stop now right in front of the lens instead of the lens being the aperture stop. So let's call this our aperture stop. Uh, it's right in front of the lens. We've got some finite sensor back here. So this is our sensor. And we've got uh, an object and an image. So the image we're going to assume is formed right at the sensor uh, because we are sane optical engineers and we put our sensors in sensible positions. So now we'd like to know what's the maximum object height. Uh, let's call this H object that we can image with our sensor. And so let's just send out some rays from the sensor. What's uh, this? This might be like our, our maximum ray. So this might be the ray that we can get the largest possible object with. And so we could send out rays that just barely nick the aperture stop like this. And then we might say that, well, this is our maximum object size. So the ray's going to bend a little bit when it hits the lens, and then it's going to uh, come to a point at our object. Or rather, it's going to land on the very tip of our object because this is the maximum size. So if we were to draw the image that this would correspond to, this would be that image. And then this might be our chief ray. So it's just the ray that gives us the maximum possible object size. But in general, uh, we don't really know what the aperture stop is going to be. Um, the aperture stop, and we, we might want to change the aperture stop from image to image. So the aperture stop uh, in the next image we take, uh, we might want it to limit the light that we're getting. So we might close down the aperture stop. And now all of a sudden we've got a problem because the maximum ray that we can send in uh, is now much smaller. So the maximum ray is now uh, maybe goes to here. And so this is our new uh, maximum object height. And this is problematic because uh, we don't want our uh, chief ray to be dependent on our aperture stop because this was what was de uh, defining our marginal ray. And so we would like uh, the chief ray to be able to handle any sized aperture stop, even an aperture stop that comes almost down to a single point. So maybe this is our aperture stop. So it's limiting uh, almost as much light as possible. It's only sending a teensy, teensy amount of light into, into our system. And so now the ray that gives us the maximum object height might look something like this. So these, uh, if we're sending rays from the very edge of our sensor, they might look something like this. Uh, and they should be actually smaller than, uh, so I've sort of drawn them at more aggressive angles than I should. Uh, these, these red rays should have initially been larger than our, our blue ones because we're closing down our aperture stop. So let me just redraw those real quick. So now this is the maximum object height that we can, uh, we can image onto our sensor. So this is our maximum object height. And this is applicable for any sized aperture stop. So uh, we could increase the size of our aperture stop, we could decrease the size of our aperture stop, and we would always be able to image this height object onto our sensor. So it's sort of the worst case. Uh, you can think of this ray as being the worst case ray for an aperture stop of zero size. And this ray we call our chief ray. So I'm going to erase the other three rays. Uh, so the three rays coming from the other side of our sensor, just so that this is less cluttered. Oop, let's redraw the lens that I just destroyed. Um, but this ray, the one that passes through the center of the aperture stop, this is, our def this is defined to be our chief ray. And this is significant because 
if we have a known sensor size, this limits the height of our object for any arbitrary aperture stop. If we increase the size of the aperture stop, we might actually be able to image a slightly larger object. But in general, um, this chief ray gives us the, our worst case conditions. So these green rays and these red rays are not the, not the chief rays. Um, we're defining the chief ray to be this ray here, uh, the one that passes through the very center of the aperture stop. And this is sort of the defining characteristic of the chief ray, is that it passes through the center of the aperture stop. So some people draw the chief ray from the top of the object, some people might draw it from somewhere in the middle of the object, but fundamentally it's the ray that passes through the center of the aperture stop. And if we have a known sensor size, then we can figure out from the chief ray uh, by just increasing or decreasing its angle, or increasing or decreasing its launch height, uh, what the maximum object height is that we can image. And now this sensor size uh, that we've been talking about up to this point, this is sort of physically generally what we'll, we'll be dealing with, but this is also known as the field stop. Uh, the field stop. So in this case, the field stop was just our sensor, our, our sensor. but in general, we can actually place uh, stops uh, in front of the sensor or somewhere else which limit the field of view, so which limit the amount of light that gets to our sensor. So in this case, in the case where we have a field stop which is uh, more limiting than our sensor, then our chief ray is the ray that just nicks the edge of this field stop. So instead of this blue ray here, or I'm gonna redraw this ray, so the blue ray should actually now go through the center of the aperture stop and just nick the edge of this sensor. And uh, let me actually redraw it entirely. So the blue ray is gonna nick the edge of the sensor, or nick the edge of the field stop, and then fall at this position on the sensor. And this is gonna correspond to an object that's maybe, I don't know, this tall. And so having this extra stop here, what we call the field stop, allows us to limit the amount of light that gets to the sensor, uh, but physically limit the image that we're forming on the sensor. So not its brightness, but the physical extent of the light. And so if you've ever taken a, taken a picture and closed down the field stop, uh, what you'd see is, while initially you saw some pretty picture, maybe it's these delicious green and blue lines, um, you're gonna see the amount of this that you can see start to close down and you'll see sort of this black area around this inner circle which you can actually see so you'll start to see the physical size of your image decrease on the sensor and you'll only be able to see this central region and just like the aperture stop uh, the field stop can in general be placed pretty much anywhere uh, so the field stop might be over here uh, it might be over here um, the field stop might even be one of your lenses or one of your optical elements and in general you'll need to test out a bunch of different rays by launching a chief ray that passes through the center of your aperture stop. And you can figure out which of these elements is actually your field stop. And I'll make a future video uh, on how to actually go about doing that mathematically. So I hope you enjoyed the video. Uh, if you did, please give it a like down below. And uh, if you have any questions or comments, post those down below and I'll try to get back to you as soon as I can. And thanks for watching. I'll see you next time.